Welcome to the climate section of AXED 44, Methods of Teaching Earth and Physical Science and Agriculture. So we'll get started here. We're looking to start off with climate monitoring. And when you think of climate monitoring, you think of storms, right? The, so here's an example of a thunderstorm with lots of lightning. You see some very interesting clouds. This is a, a, a picture from a few years ago in Las Cruces where we had some severe storms and some interesting clouds toward the end of the day. And things like fires. This was a wildfire. So this wasn't a storm, but it is sort of a phenomenon that is controlled by climate. And then we also have things like dust storms. This is a dust devil that we commonly see in the desert southwest and is an indicator of how dry the soils are. And then we look down, instead of looking up in the sky, we look and see the, the curled pieces of soil uh, after rains or even the stream beds after, after the irrigation season has ended. So this is actually a picture of the, the bottom of this, the Rio Grande River after the irrigation has stopped. So one of the things that, that you may come across is questions about the climate. And I get a lot of questions too. And some of the common questions I am asked are, example is, what is the hottest temperature in New Mexico? What is the coldest? When was the last time it hailed? So, or how do I access reliable climate data? Or what is being done in New Mexico to collect such information? Or is, what is my closest station? And where are those records available? And is the data free? That's always a big question. Okay, so we're going to first tackle through some of these issues by looking at the, the climate records that are available to you in New Mexico. Well, one of the, of the tools that are available is to summarize the climate into things like statistics. So here's an example of the Las Cruces, the campus weather station. And we summarize that in terms of how long is the, has the data been collected. So here at, the, at NMSU, we've been collecting data here since 1985, 1895 to the present. And we've looked at things like statistics on, so when was, the, what's the coldest temperature ever recorded? That was minus 10 degrees. That was back in 1962 and January 11th. What about the hottest temperature? Well, that was 110 in June 26th of 1994. And things like the, wh how much rain fell, what's the most rain that fell in Las Cruces on in one day? So that was 6.49 back in August of 30th of 1935. And we'll actually look at this particular event later on in this lecture. And then another one would maybe the what was the snowiest year? What's the snowiest that ever, how, how much snow has, has ever fallen in, in Las Cruces? In 1931, we had 14.2 inches. And this graph on the bottom shows you the amount of precipitation falling on a, on a monthly basis on average. And this is average from 1959 to 2012 and at the NMSU. As you can see, um, several things should pop out to you in this graph. Um, first of all is the scale from 0 to 2.5. And then the, the red bars are the average monthly uh, precipitation. And, and the first thing that comes out when I see is what was the what's the driest time of the year? Well, that's the springtime. It's not not surprising. When March and April come by, we it's not it's not surprising to find either no rain on those months or just a f maybe one storm, at, and dur at, during that whole s s spring season, and then if you look toward later in the year, we see the monsoon. So we can see these uh, larger amounts of rain. Of um, in July, on average, we get about an inch and a half. In August, which is our wettest month in Las Cruces, we get just a little bit over two inches falling over in, in, in NMSU. And then rounding out the, the end of the monsoon, we, we get um, the, you know more than an inch rain falling in September. So this is one way to, to summarize. If somebody asks you what, when, what, when is the, the most rainiest part of the year, how much do we get in one year, and what is the driest times of the year? And you can answer those questions based off of a graph like this. So let's go on. Okay, so in terms of records, records go back quite a while, 
But as you go further and further back, you're getting less and less data because there, there weren't very many cities in New Mexico if you go back to the 1800s. And this is actually a map from 1897. So what the answer was, the question was, what was it like in 1897? So if you look at, for instance, this was an interesting map because you look at the county boundaries. Do you notice anything different in the county boundaries? So look at Doniana. It's, it's quite a bit different than it is now. And this is actually the mean isotherms. Isotherms meaning the same temperature. So it, along those lines is constant temperatures for 1897. So as you can see that the map is quite a bit different from the current map so you have to do a little bit of um, study to figure out what where things are. Uh, some of them are the same, some of them have changed over time. So what about individual stations? What was available? Well not too bad but this is 19, 1897. We see, we see a, a number of stations here. Here's the, the station name and the counties. Elevations, annual this is the temperatures in this area here, and this is precipitation. So we can see there, and you can, and there's actually a column here called length of record in years. So even in 1897, there were 21 years of, of weather data collected in Albuquerque. And if you go back into the forts, which that's probably the most common place you'll find long records of data are the forts because of the Civil War and they've me been measuring data. So like Fort Bayard has been measuring data for more than 22 years, in, even in 1897. And Fort Union, uh, we're measuring 37 years, 37 years of, of data in 1897. And just below that, uh, before it cuts off um, at Fort Wingate, there were 34 years of data in 1897. So it's sparse, but there are some sources of data that go back that, that far. So what if you want to go back further? Well, you, you really can't look at actual thermometer measurements, but you can go through what they call reconstructions through, through, through things like looking at tree rings. And this is actually a summary of some work from our colleagues in University of Arizona, Connie Woodhouse. And they she has looked at the tree rings in these uh, red triangles here in, in pines from trees and, and she has been able to go back 349 years looking at the tree rings to tell the the June and July precipitation in this in this box in this area here in southern New Mexico and that's what this this blue line here is the is the estimated precipitation going all the way back um, through the the mid 1600s to the present and you can see we I I noted where there are were droughts where the these these arrows here these are um, orange arrows and then when we saw when we find the the most rainiest years are the the green arrows here and I kind of summarize those in this table here and you, one thing pops out are is that the, this is the 50s drought and you can see other droughts here the 1900 right around um, 1825. 18, I mean, 1770s, and then there was some a real intense drought here early in like 1664, 1673, and um, so just an example of what is available uh, in terms of, of of records going all the way back to the 1600s. But what about more recently? So what we like to do as climatologists is is provide information that's useful, that's um, that provides a little more. And, uh, in depth to, to to help you interpret the data, and what we like to do is 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 give data that's summarized in climate divisions. So these are areas of the state of New Mexico that are that have similar climate, which which also d is defined by the the elevation. So like look, you can see that it's colored by the different elevations. You can see where it's in, like for instance in climate division seven, it's the southeast part of the state. It's lower el lowest elevation in the state, and sort of the plains. And then if you go into where we are in Las Cruces in Climate Division 8, it's the, the southwest desert. It's low elevation, not quite as low as, as the southeast, but it's it's the one of the, some of the um, areas where it's, the, it's part of the Chihuahuan Desert is in this area. So let's go through and find out some information on the climate in, in Climate Division 8, for example. So Climate Division 8, southwestern desert, which is covers here. Here's this, where rough, 
um, delineation of the climate division eight is in this area. So it includes all of the southwest, the Boot Hill, and into Otero County, into the lower elevations bordering Texas. So we'll look at let's look at the annual precipitation in climate division eight. So we have records going back to 1895, and this this the, each one of these little b b dots is an annual precipitation amount. So you can see the things that should pop out to you is preci annual precipitation is actually quite variable. So the 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 um, the units here are inches over here on the left side. So it goes from six to more than almost 20. As you can see, on a year-to-year -year basis, sometimes there's more than four or five inches variability, even more. So maybe on some of the here's our wettest year is 1941, and our driest was 1956 during the, during the drought. So you can sort of see this 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 whole period here was a was the 50s drought, and then the 70s, 80s, and 90s were a period of of, of more or less a wetter periods, and then it's gone through a little drier period in most recent history with 2012 with the, being the seventh driest. So what about on average? So if we, we think about the average precipitation for an area, here's Doniana County and it's colored by the annual precipitation in inches. So it goes from a low of seven, seven to eight is in this darker brown, which is in that this area by Mesquite down to Anthony bordering Texas, all the way up to the the precipitation is high as 15 to 24 inches, and that's on top of the mountains. So one thing that stri should strike you in this graph is that basically precipitation varies by mainly elevation. So if you can see the, the higher elevations in the Oregon mountains here they are, have the highest precipitation as well as some of the higher precipitation falling in the Franklin Mountains. And the lower elevations along the Rio Grande Valley have, have the lowest amounts of precipitation. So we're in this area here of around bordering this 9 to 10 inches. On and Remember, this is average temperature. On a, on a particular year, it could be quite different depending on if on the, the weather patterns for that year. So remember, local precipitation is highly variable. On particular storm, it can vary from neighborhood to neighborhood. So what f falls in your yard may not fall into somebody else's. And it's just an example of that from looking from the airplane. This particular rain event, there was about a quarter inch falling here, but nothing in the surrounding areas. So as you, from if we use a tool like radar, this is New Mexico. So here's Farmington, Grants Gallup, and here's Roswell. Las Cruces is down here. You can see there's areas where there's no rain, but then if you go just across the county, you can get more than an inch and a half or two inches just just traveling um, just a few maybe 10 20 miles so it's basically a very highly variable this is a, the, the monsoon this is in july of 2012 which shows you that the phenomena that you, it doesn't rain the same everywhere so what about temperatures so here's a graph of the annual average temperatures in Div climate division eight since 1895 and this graph goes starts from about 57 degrees and goes up to 61 degrees in this in this graph here and goes a little higher actually, and then goes from 1895 all the way to 2015 on the annual average here. So as you can see, this on a year to year the variability is just a few degrees on average, and there's and what's what should be apparent to you, you can see this this trend upward trend and average annual uh, within those years there's a, still a lot of variability but the but there's an upward trend going and this is for the whole climate division eight with 2012 being the warmest on record remember in the previous graph 2012 was also the seventh driest on record so it was a this particular drought that we're in has been a warm as well a warm drought as well as as is not not as intense in terms of the the least precipitation as other droughts, but it's been the warmest one. So that and this trend is 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 pretty common across New Mexico and all, all across the the country. You can see this kind of upward trend, but within the trend, there's there's year to year variations. So what about average? So here's the we like to also talk about the lows and highs. So here's the for Doniana County. Here's the the low average low temperatures across uh, across Doniana County and you can see it, this graph um, that's colored by the low temperatures and that's ranged from 36 to 38 all the way up to, 
all the way down to 20 to 24. And as you can see, some of the higher elevations are, have, are slightly cooler. And in this area here is probably our coolest over here on the Hornada. And we're in this, in Las Cruces is in this, in this area of about, um, so that's, this one is uh, 20, 24, 24 to 28. And this area of 26 to 28 um, is our average low temperatures. So what about the highs in January? Well, it also follows the, the during the high part of the day, the, the, the lower you are, the warmer you're going to get. So this also follows the terrain height. So within the Rio Grande Valley, the average lows are in, in the upper 50s and near 60 as you go higher up in elevation. So if you go toward the Oregon Mountains, you're going to get cooler. And even um, below, below freezing as you go up to the top. And this is the average average high temperatures so um, a little different for the lows but the highs you is, are very similar to the precipitation where you go higher up in elevation the most changes you'll see and especially in high temperatures it's cooler which makes sense right okay so what about at one location so we have a weather station on the campus and this just shows you the trace of of daily highs and lows and averages for the campus in 2015. So this goes from January through December. And the blue line here, the bottom one, is the low temperatures. The black is the average. And the dark red crimson line is the maximum temperatures. You can see, and this is, every one of these divisions is, is 20 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, on the average, there's there's about a, almost a 40 to 35 to 40 degree variation from the high to low on, on average throughout the whole year and that's pretty common for a, a, a desert location like this where you can get pretty dry so the drier you are the the more variation you get on a daily basis compared to say if you were in san diego which you get a much less um, day um, day to day or even a high to low uh, temperature um we're, we're in, in probably around five degrees or so compared to to, to, to a desert location. And on the graph below is the, is the, is the actual um, individual um, rainfall. And you can see, um, remember that graph I showed at the beginning, the, the, the monthly t um, precipitation? Well, here's the, over here is the spring. So you can see, you, we can get rain all the time, but on average, you can see not much rain falls in the spring, whereas in, right when the monsoon starts, right around here, is you can start to see more intense rain. So on, on, a, on a daily basis, each one of these bars are is one, one day's worth. So you can see uh, right around the end of July on 2015, that is, we got more rain here than, than we usually do throughout the whole year. And that's pretty common. And, then we, and occasionally we may get some, some late, late season, late year rains in November, even throughout December, where you may even get, um, this one here was, a, was, was actually a snow event. And this is actually the, 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 the melted amounts of, of, of rain. So let's move on to um, one example of using the climate data is coming up with a plant hardiness zones. And you may see this in, if you look at a, a seed um, container where you buy seeds for, for your garden. And it'll, and it'll tell you what, what areas will, this, will this, these plants grow. And, and they have it by a plant hardiness zones and here's the zones here it's colored they go all over from 1a to well over um, 13 uh, zone 13 across the country so it's a whole country's spectrum here but here in new mexico we we're we're in this in the zone zone eight and some places are in seven um, so here in las cruces we're in zone 8a and ba basically the plant hardiness zone is defined are based on the average of the coldest temperatures observed each year. Remember, this it's not the coldest that we can ever get, but it's the average of the coldest temperatures. So that's for our area. It's it's 12.4 um, degrees Fahrenheit is is our is our average of the coldest temperatures. Which the temperatures can range in terms of the lows from from positive 10 to positive 15 degrees Fahrenheit in Las Cruces. So you can use this as a as a guide, and you can see that the the zones change as you go up in elevation. So if you you know if you go up in the, the higher elevations here, you can get into. So this is we're in zone 8A. You can get into um, slightly cooler cooler zones here. Um, 
and even in the Hornada here, we're in the in the sevens. So and of course, if you were to to expand down to other parts of New Mexico, you can go into the other these other zones. But we're in zo zone eight A because of our average lows aren't that that low. So what causes these extreme events? Well, we can go through. And here's we are in the southwest, and most of the extreme events, we're going to talk more about extremes now, are from frontal activity, so cold fronts. So that's what usually causes most of our extreme temperatures and precipitation events. So about, on average, of the four, four states in the southwest, 52% of the these extreme events are from fronts. And then 22% are from extratropical cyclones. These are a lot of the the storms that come through the area. Um, the monsoon it, it, um, it causes about 21% of our extreme events and then some other things like tropical cyclones which we can get in the, in the fall um, and then other, other events like upslope flow from, from as air goes up the mountains and causing storms. So, so remember most of the, the, the extreme events in, in this area of the southwest are from, are from fronts. So let's look at some temperature records. So what is the min record lowest temperature in New Mexico? Well, it's minus 50. I mean, but you can see that all across the country there are uh, um, extreme events all over the place, even in Arizona, minus 40. And what's, you know, if you look at Florida, minus 2 Fahrenheit, very extreme uh, cold. Um, even in Alaska and Hawaii, and I, that's likely the Mauna Loa Observatory. So what about record high temperatures? So our high temperature in New Mexico, the, ever, the highest ever it, it measured, was 122 Fahrenheit. That was measured at the Waste Isolation, waste isolation Pilot Plant in Carlsbad. Um, so we can get pretty high, uh, even higher than some of our neighbors here, even higher than Texas. Um, so what about here in NMSU? Well, this is a graph that shows uh, another way to portray temperatures across uh, on the average. So we, we have the blue line is the average minimum, the red line is the average high, and then the extremes are actually these, this extreme low or the, the green line, and the extreme highs, so the, the highest on, the on each day of the, of the year, are this red line. So as you can see, there, our, our, hot, our hottest is 110, which is about right here, that was, that was in the um, end of June. And then our coldest ever was minus 10, and that, that, that is, appears right here. So you can see that you, we can get some extremes uh, events here in, in both January, beginning of February, and then also in the, in the late fall, at the end of November, we can get some, some, some really big swings in, in temperature. Each one of these horizontal lines is 10 degrees Fahrenheit, so we can get big swings of my, 20 below... 20 degrees variations in some of these extremes. So on a on a day-to-day -day basis, it's you, you could get some big changes when you get these events. And remember, a lot of these are maybe from from um, uh, cold fronts that come through here. So if you're paying close attention to the weather, you want to basically look for cold fronts that that could have if impact your area that could cause some massive freeze events for for farmers and and um, um, gardeners. So what about the cold snap of 2011? That was one of the more recent times when we had very cold uh, record temperatures, and we had a minus five here in Las Cruces. But look at, if you can see that air, the whole area around, the only areas that were above freezing were in 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 Texas and in over in, in the far um, far west here in Lordsburg. It's only above above zero actually. So it, 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 a lot of the areas were in minus 20. Even the Hornada was minus 20 Fahrenheit. And White Sands, um, the, the National Monument, was looks like it was minus 16. And as you go up into the Sacramento's, you're some minus 20s. And even a minus 30 up here. So we can get, get quite quite cold when we, uh, when we get these cold fronts that come in, bringing cold air masses from the north. That's what happened in this event. So what about precipitation so what was the the record maximum daily precipitation that was actually in 1955 at lake maloya that's up by uh, raton up there there's a weather station up there it had 11 inches of rain in one day um, so that's comparable to some other states not quite uh, down here most of the 
the records in this area are from tropical systems like hurricanes and here um, and we, we had a very wet year in, in this area in 1955 what about the record annual r rain amounts well we can we had 19 remember from 1941 was our all right we had the most rain precipitation in overall in New Mexico in 1941 and then one station here I had um, this was actually in the Sacramento Mountains uh, just uh, south I think it's south e southeast of Rudoso um, the station no longer is there, but in 1941 it measured um, 62 inches on, on for that year for for precipitation. That's that's a lot of precipitation for New Mexico, and uh, on, on the order of more than um, in some, more than a lot of other states. So what what was what's the driest that's ever occurred? Well, there's one of the driest years that was recorded is, is is in Hermanas in um, in the southwest part of the state. It was about an inch. There may have been other other locations that have had less than that, but this is one of the official ones that were very low amounts. And some states have even had zero, like this is Death Valley in California had, had zero rain in one year. So it's possible to have no rain falling um, in, in, in areas, and especially in areas that we don't monitor. So these are only the places where we have a weather station. So it, it wouldn't be surprising to find other places in New Mexico that have had had no rain in one year. So what about some of this record? So this is it. the following next few slides and th through the end of this presentation are going to be talking about precipitation events, some of the records and extreme events that can occur in, in, um, in areas. And we'll focus in on Las Cruces. So this is the event that occurred in 1935 over Las Cruces. And this was a, a, a late monsoon uh, event that occurred in August 29th and 30th. And it was is actually this was from a, a paper in 1942 so they called NMSU was then called the New Mexico State Agricultural College and this particular event started very late in the day at about 11 11 p.m. and and by then there was um, you know started around 11 p.m. and by 2 in the morning they, they had more than five inches of, of rain falling in the area and and here's just some documentation about that what happened so flood water began flowing into las cruces from the mesa east of the city shortly after 1 a.m and a large part of the city was inundated within an hour water reached a depth of four feet over a considerable part of the residential district and more than 100 houses were destroyed or damaged so this is just an example of what how much rain and and because there was only very very few um, uh, rain gauges in the area in this bottom part here this from investigation of rainwater collecting cans tubs and other containers they constructed a map of the extent of rainfall which is presented in the next slide so this is actually as a result of of, of hard work finding the where the water fell in areas and the actual rain gauge which this was the the location of NMSU which was remember called Ag College that's where we had a 6.49 inches and based off of their investigation there there appears to be areas where they had uh, more than eight inches of precipitation falling here's where Las Cruces is here's the river so this, this is a possibility of having a lot more rain than six inches here in Las Cruces even though the official measurement was was 6.49 here so Think about that and, and basically it flooded out Las Cruces at that time. And it's very interesting to see it was a, it was a very isolated incident here. So here's the, where that, that 6.49 was. And as you can see up in Hornada, was all, there was um, in, on the, the next day, the remember it was the 29th and 30th. The 30th had a 1.43 over on in the on Tularosa Basin, Oregon. They had a 0.62. El Paso only had 0.89, Columbus had 1.47, Hatch 1.83. So there was not a lot of rainfall in most of the area. I, although then over here in this very southwest, there was um, there was a rainfall of 2.75 on the 30th and 0.3 on the 29th. But overall, doesn't really compare to this to this event here in in Las Cruces on this event during that during that 29th or 30th. So what about more recently? Well, here's the, the the bottom here on the bottom right is are are the records for Las Cruces. So here's that 1935 event, 
And the second most rain that we had in Las Cruces was 4.11. That was back in the 41. If you remember that year, that was the wettest year in, in overall in New Mexico. The third wettest was actually re pretty recent. It was in July 26th of 2010. We had 3.34 inches. That was the third highest 24-hour precipitation in the record book since 1894. So let's look at a little more about that event. So here's actually a, a map of Las Cruces, and all these dots here are show the the uh, rainfall measurements from the Cocoraz network. Cocoraz stands for the Community Collaborative Rain, Hail, and Snow Network. So this was back, remember this was back in 2010, and it's sort of colored by the, the rainfall. So these green, uh, dark green are the 0.9 to 2.14 inches. This mustard orange color is 2.15 to 3.21. As you can see, there's a lot of variability, and the highest measured in this network over in Las Cruces over here in the southwest part, we had a 3.56 um, at this station here. And remember, the, the official measurement at the NMSU campus was 3.34. So there's actually more fell than was officially me measured. And in comparison, only 1.82 was was measured at the airport which is w over here in this area so and that's commonly what is used as our official measurement in las cruces so if you go to the tv station they'll actually pr provide what what was what is what has fell at the at the airport which maybe remember the airport's way on the west mesa of las cruces and sometimes the the the, the weather over there in the west mesa is is not like this the, the rainfall or the weather found in the center of Las Cruces. So if we did not have all these measurements from the Cocoraz network, we would only say that it was it was not an extreme event. It was only 1.82. But we did have all these other observations. And here, right around this area is where the 3.34 fell. So here's a, just a tabular example of some of the some of the um, high measurements in Las Cruces. So here's that 3.56. And here's a bunch of them around 3 inches across across a Las Cruces and as you can see it's quite a widespread uh, rain event and this is actually a graph of that event but showing the the rainfall measurements in this as the dots colored by th this graph and then I also put the what was measured by the radar and the radar was down here in Santa Teresa and the radar provides coverage of precipitation estimations for the whole area and, and actually did a fairly good job. It didn't. It missed a few of, of these um, uh, estimations of from the rain gauges. Remember, the dots are the actual people measuring rain gauge, whereas the 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 colored background is from a, a radar from from way down here in Santa Teresa. So it, it did a pretty good job of estimating, and it also can tell us what what were the rainfall in areas where we don't have observations. So there's actually some places that. That we had these red areas where there were more than two, between two and 3.67 inches, where we didn't have rain gauges. There were very high rain even along in, in, Interstate 10 um, over here uh, on um, probably by the landfill where we had very high, and then over on the hills over here, and then in the southwest. So this is, provides a good way, and but we have a fairly decent coverage of, of rainfall across the across Las Cruces. So what did it actually look like during this event? So I had a, a camera, took some photographs from that earlier in the day. Remember that this actually event was occurred in the evening. So this was the, at the very start, before the event started, it was seven, this photo was taken at 7 p.m., 7, 12 p.m. on Sunday, July 25th. And this looking out of Skeen Hall, looking toward the looking toward the southwest uh, of the West Mesa here. And you can see the rainfall coming in from from that area, and, um, it, and it actually fell, most of it fell later in the evening uh, toward uh, midnight and early morning of the next day. And this is what the campus looked like. This is where we collect our weather station data, and there was actually quite a bit of flooding in that part. This is behind the, the police station where the windmills are. Um, so when we had you can see where the water had been there's a water line here and so there's a low area so this area over here um so this is university avenue over here the police station is over here the convention center is behind this building so you can see the quite a bit of flooding it, it kind of um sitting out in this area and it took more than uh, probably uh 
a day to, to for the water to go down. So it, it can get quite wet and uh, water can settle in this area. So I just wanted to give you, this is the last slide in this air, in this um, presentation. I wanted to give you a, a sense of, of what is available and just give you a, a, a taste for the weather that we can find in, in Las Cruces. And we can get quite wet and quite dry depending on the year, lots of variability. In the next lecture, we're gonna, um, we're gonna actually meet physically over in um, Dr. Dormady's uh, a lecture is we're going to look at where do you find the information to that 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 we that somebody may ask for say they want the highs or extremes or averages where do you get that information so it, and it's not hard to find but you have to have some a list of of URLs and web websites and, and once you get to know these it's it's actually pretty simple to actually get get the information out so um, I'm, I'm really helping you out in terms of making things easier if you didn't have that it, it may take hours to find the information or maybe you may never find it so um, so listen up for the for the results of that later on um, um, in, in the lectures